Hi there, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, we're going to talk about using the Nmap tool to conduct port scans of systems. Anything connected to a network that offers services, such as a printer, router, or a web server, provides open ports to accept connection requests. If the correct ports aren't open on a device, it won't function properly. If too many ports are open, the device might be vulnerable to attack. Nmap is one of the most important tools available for cybersecurity professionals, network engineers, and system administrators. It allows you to scan network devices and determine what ports are open so that you can learn what services you're exposing on a network, verify firewall configurations, and perform testing and troubleshooting. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a few actual Nmap scans, but before we run those scans, you'll need to know a little bit about the way that Nmap presents its results. Nmap will provide you with a list of ports that it detected, and then provide state information for each one of those ports. There are four possible states. Open ports are those that are listening for incoming connection requests and responding to those connections. Closed ports are those that seem to be accessible to the scanner, but there's no service responding to connection requests. Filtered ports are ports that Nmap attempted to scan, but a firewall interfered with the scan. And finally, unfiltered ports are those that Nmap was able to access, but for some reason was not able to determine whether the port was open or closed. There are also some special cases that you should be aware of. Nmap might be unable to make a definitive statement about the state of a port. In those cases, it will provide you with two options that it's unable to choose between. For example, a port marked Open Filtered is either open or filtered, and a port marked Closed Filtered is either closed or filtered. Now that you have Nmap up and running on your system, you're ready to run a basic Nmap scan. Before we run that scan, you'll need to know a little bit about the way that Nmap presents its results. Nmap will provide you with a list of ports that it detected and then provide some state information for each one of those ports. And there are four possible states. Open ports are those that are listening for incoming connection requests and responding to those connections. Closed ports are those that seem to be accessible to the scanner, but there is no service responding to connection requests. Filtered ports are ports that Nmap attempted to scan, but a firewall interfered with the scan. And finally, unfiltered ports are those that Nmap was able to access, but for some reason wasn't able to determine whether the port was open or closed. There are also two special cases that you should be aware of. Nmap might be unable to make a definitive statement about the state of a port. In those cases, Nmap will provide you with two options that it's unable to choose between. For example, a port mark Open Pipe Filtered is either open or filtered, and a port marked Closed Pipe Filtered is either closed or filtered. Now with that information under our belts, let's try performing an Nmap scan. I'm back at the Mac command line, and I'm going to attempt to run a basic scan of the scanme.nmap.org server. To do that, I simply type Nmap and the DNS name of the server. The scan runs, and I see some results. Now, before I look at those results with you, I want to run the scan one other way. I don't have to specify the DNS name of a server. I can also use an IP address. So let's go ahead and look up the current IP address for scanme.nmap.org. I can do that using the dig command. And in my results, I see that the IP address for this server is 45.33.32.156. So let's try running the Nmap scan by specifying the IP address instead of the DNS name. I'm just going to type Nmap and then the IP address, 45.33.32.156. And when that scan completes, I get the same results that I did when I scanned the port by DNS name. So let's take a look at these results. We have four lines here. It's showing me four open ports on this server. The first one, port 22, is used by the Secure Shell protocol. That's a way to make administrative connections to a Linux system. So I'm guessing from this that this is probably a Linux system. The second result is showing me that port 80 is open on this system. That's a port that's normally used for the HTTP service. So there's probably a web server running here as well. Then I see two other ports that I'm not so familiar with, 9929 and 31337. Those are kind of unusual ports, so this might be something that I'd need to dig into a little further. I can see from the description that 9929 
is associated with NPing, so that's probably an Nmap-related service. But then 31337 says elite. And actually, 31337 is hacker speak for the word elite, and it's a commonly used port when systems are compromised. So if I saw this scan result on one of my own systems, I'd be very concerned that port 31337 is open. You now know how to run a basic Nmap scan and interpret the results. If you'd like, now would be a great time to pause the course and try running a scan on one of your own systems. Now remember, you should never scan a system unless you have explicit permission to do so. You now know how to run a basic Nmap scan and interpret the results. If you'd like, you can try running a scan on one of your own systems. But remember, you should never scan a system unless you have explicit permission to do so. Now that you know how to scan a single system, I'd like to spend some time talking about how you can run more complex scans. But before I do that, I want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new videos as they come out. Nmap also allows you to scan more than one system at the same time. You can choose to scan a list of systems or an entire network. Let's take a look at some of those options. When you're starting an Nmap scan, you have the choice of providing a single IP address or DNS name to scan. That's what we did earlier. Or you can provide a list of IP addresses and DNS names, separating them with spaces. You can also provide a range of IP addresses or specify a subnet mask to scan. Finally, if you have the DNS names or IP addresses stored in a file, you can read the scan target list in from that file. Let's take a look at each of these options inside of Nmap. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is try scanning a couple of systems at the same time. I'm going to run some scans of systems that use private IP addresses on my local network, so you won't be able to use these same addresses. If you'd like to follow along, you can try running some scans on your local network if you have permission to run those scans. You'll also have an opportunity to try running some scans against machines that I've set up for you to scan later in this course. Now this time I'm going to scan three addresses. I'm going to start by typing the nmap command, and I'm just going to type in the IP addresses of those systems, 192.168.1.1, 192.168.1.3, and 192.168.1.6. And when I hit enter, nmap goes off and begins scanning those systems. It's scanning for open ports, and it's about to show me the results of scanning all of those three systems. There they are. I can see that each of those systems does have some open ports, and there are certainly some interesting things that I might want to pursue there. What I'd like to show you now is a few other ways that we can scan those same systems. It's tedious to keep typing that 192.168.1 over and over again, so Nmac gives me a shorthand that I can use instead. I can type 192.168.1, and then finish this by typing the IP address of the first system, 1.1. And then I can, if I just want to change the last number of the system, I can add a comma and put a 3 and another comma and put a 6. And this short command is the same as the one that I typed earlier where I typed out all three of those IP addresses. So when this scan finishes, I'll see the same three scan results that I saw earlier. Now I can also run a scan by specifying a range of IP addresses. I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen here. And let's say I wanted to scan all of the systems in the first six addresses on this network, 192.168.1.1 through 6. I can do that by typing nmap, 192.168.1.1, and then dash 6 to say that I'd like to specify a range of six IP addresses here. So nmap's going to go off and launch that scan, and in just a few seconds we'll have some scan results. And there we are. We actually see that only those three systems I had scanned earlier 1.1, 1.3, and 1.6 actually have open ports, but it looks like two other systems, 1.4 and 1.5, are up on the network, but all of the ports are closed, and we didn't see any results from the system at 192.168.1.2. Now, the last way that I can specify a network range is using a subnet mask. Let's try an example. Let's say I'd like to scan 192.168. 1.0, and then use the slash 29 wildcard mask. That's going to go out and start my scan, and we'll see what the results look like in just a second. And there are those results. 
We scanned eight IP addresses specified by that subnet mask, and we can see that six of the systems are active in that IP range. One other thing we can do if we don't want to specify IP addresses on the command line is scan a list of systems contained in a file. Now, I have a file already prepared that contains a list of systems running on my local network. Let's take a look at that file. We can see here it lists seven IP addresses, and I can tell Nmap, instead of using IP addresses that I specify on the command line, to read them from this file. I do that by using the minus lowercase i capital L flag, saying that I'd like to scan systems in a list, and then just providing the name of that file. Once I do that, Nmap is going to go off and scan those systems just as it would if I listed them on the command line. And there are the results of scanning those seven systems. Nmap provides us with a lot of flexibility about how we specify scan targets. You can choose whichever approaches work best in your environment. That's how you can use Nmap to scan your network for systems with open ports. I hope this video helped you better understand scanning with Nmap. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more IT certification content.